He is so good. He's always been the same, you know, and he doesn't change. And you can, you know, I, I think it was Steve who said this one, you can hang your hat on that. I hadn't heard that phrase in a long time. And, uh, and dad used, that was one dad used, but that, I, I was like, you know, because it is true, he's faithful. I mean, what he says, you can count on it. Like the other, the one dad said, you can take it to the bank. It, it won't bounce. It's for real. It's not rubber. <laughs> you know, it's true. What he says, it will be. And I'm thankful to have a God that I can depend on like that, that I know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not going to change tomorrow just because uh, the wind blows wrong or or whatever. He's the same and I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. But we're going to be in Colossians tonight, chapter 1. But I thank God for just, he's amazing. He's just so amazing. And <laughs> so many little simple things just hit you like we were talking this morning. And you'll see in a minute. It just it blows me out of the water sometimes just how amazing things are and so simple that we miss them. And I just, I'm like... You're you just he's amazing. But we're going to start in Colossians at chapter one, verse nine. It says, for this cause, we also since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. To And they would they were praying. That you that the decide or that the, the Colossians would be filled with knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding to know the will of God and all spiritual understanding to understand the spirit that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God to w- walk Fruit that you may walk worthy of the Lord. What do we talk about? Being a good steward of our what God has given us, that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful. Because John 15 8 says, Herein is the Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, being fruitful in every good work and increasing. In the knowledge of God, to understand God, to, to know him better, to know his plan. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power. Strengthened. <laughs> his strength is made perfect in weakness. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power. Imagine being strengthened. By his glorious power. (laughs) I am strong. (laughs) Amen. Unto all patience. And long suffering with joyfulness. Unto all patience strengthened. With his great power. Unto unto all patience. All and long suffering. With joyfulness. Give thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of an inheritance of the saints in light. That's made us to be able to be partakers of an inheritance of the light of him. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He delivered us from darkness. He took us out of sin. Give us the chance to know the light. To become light. Because he wrapped us. Clothed us in light. His righteousness is, his, is the light of God. Translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That give us an opportunity to be in that kingdom. In whom we have redemption through his blood. 
even the forgiveness of sins. We have redemption. We have been redeemed. Turned in and traded to made something that was thrown in like in a bottle that was thrown along the side of the road and dirty, but yet cashed in and redeemed, been redeemed by the precious, the cash that was paid with Jesus' blood, that we've been redeemed and now are valuable because we have become the royalty, like Amy was saying last night. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature, firstborn of every creature. Jesus was that new creature that he had that birth because he was born of a virgin, which the seed of man was had no corruption in him. He was born of the father of the spirit overshadowed him. There was no corruption in that birth. So he was born and is a new creature. He's the firstborn of, of the new creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things are created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And this is what I wanted to get to because, it, like I said, it just blowed my mind. And Dad started to get into it here. He probably, he, I may pass it off to him in a minute. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Head of the body of Christ, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, the church. He created the church, the living church of God. He created. He created it. He, it was to, that to change the law from worshiping to go into the holy of holies to be able that only a priest could come to God. And atone for your sins, but that he changed it, that, that we could become the church, that we could become the temple of the living God. The firstborn of the dead, he was resurrected from the dead. That sin, what have we been come because we've been born again? So hold that place for me. Go with me to Matthew. Chapter 16. We're going to start about verse 13. It just it floored me, Danny. <laughs> He's so good. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And he said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias and others, Jeremiah, and one or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He called him Peter, the rock. And he said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. He wanted a church that he could speak directly to and that it could be, the heart of God could be revealed. And Simon Peter was of the beginning. He was revealing to him that plan that of what the church would look like and be like. That's why he spoke that to Peter. And he said, upon this rock will I build my church. That you will be able to hear what God says and speak what God says. 
just like he did what he heard the father say he spoke he said all that i speak i hear from my father and that's what he was saying to Peter. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, because you didn't flesh and blood has not told you this, but my father has given it to you. My father has revealed it to you. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, he, because why he wanted to speak to us, that we could speak what God says. Speak what God says. He heard from God. That was to what the church was going to be. Because see, the priest, only the high priest could go in and hear what God had to say. Had to offer a sacrifice. And sometimes God didn't speak to them. They went a span of 400 years that he didn't talk to Israel. But he wanted a church that he could speak to upon this rock I will build my church that they will believe that he is the Christ the son of the living God and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against him like we were talking about the um, earlier before service I was writing in my little journal that um, youth group, I think youth group got me, and it says, I, I never, I don't remember reading it. I know I've read the Psalms, but it's Psalms 45, 6. Let me read it. Oh, uh, 46, 5. See, my dyslexia flips me around. God in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. And in my journal, in the other translation, it says, God within her and she will not fall. Will not fall. The church will not fall because God is in us. Because God is within us. And he reveals himself to us. And if we will hear him. And that's what he told Peter. He says, flesh and blood have not revealed this to thee. But my father has told you this, Peter. And upon that, I'm going to build my church. To hear God speak. To hear him. That's what he wants. He wants to speak to each and every one of you. But you got to draw nigh to him. And he'll draw nigh to you. He says to cleanse your hands, purify your hearts, to draw nigh to him, and he'll draw nigh to you. He wants to speak to you that you could speak what he says. But I never seen that with Peter like that until today. That's how what he was foreshadowing the church in Peter, what he said with Peter. He became the first of the church. Jesus created the church because that song, King of Kings. It says, and the church of Christ began. When he rose from the dead, the church of Christ began. The church of the living God that I could know God and be a part of because accepting Jesus it began. And he told Peter, he said, upon this rock, because God revealed it, not man, but God revealed to him that he was the Christ, the Son of God. That's the simple, that's all how you were saved. You have to believe that to accept salvation and to confess it. But he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Let's go on. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He gave Peter those keys, that power. What does he give to us? Same power to loose and to bind. To loose it here and to loose it in heaven. To bind it here or to bind it in heaven. Our words are important. What we speak. 
because we can bind the hands of God from even moving for us because we we spoke something to be bound when we should have had it loosed. But upon this rock that God can speak to us, Daddy, and he became that first in Colossians. We'll go back there. In 18, he says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the beginning, the beginning of the church. He began the church that is now what we know of now because the Jewish nation worshiped God in the temple. But he was the beginning. The firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him, to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. That we could be presented unblameable. Holy in God's sight. That we could have that wrap, that vesture that she was talking about last night. That investment, those robes. That we could be presented before God unblameable. In his sight. To hear him like Peter heard him. He says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my father. And that's what he wants, dad. Is that personal relationship upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it they can't because they can't take away you hearing what the father says it's you going away from the father and running far away from his voice but to hear and know what God has to say to know what God has to say in your life, in your family's life, in your friend's life, in strangers' lives that you pass by. If you will communicate with him, he'll communicate with us. And he will speak, say this, say that, do this, do that. If we will just listen, listen to him. Because, but the beginning of the church, he was telling Peter, he said, this, upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this, of you hearing and knowing that I'm the son of God, I'm the Christ. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. They can't flood it. They can't overrun it. They can't defeat it. They can't march like Helm's Deep, the horde of of. Uh, all the Uruks, they can't, and, and all the Urukai, they can't overtake it. They cannot. Because, he said, the because Jesus said it, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But because of that, he heard God. He says, the flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Think about that. Think about this. Jewish custom, Jewish history had not spoken to any of them for 400 years. Zechariah was spoken to by Gabriel. Mary was spoken to by Gabriel. But Peter, here's God Almighty. Peter, here's the great I am. Peter gets to hear, the, and why Jesus is saying, this is what it's going to be like, Peter. This is what the church is going to be like, Peter. They're going to hear me and know what I got to say. Amen. They're going to hear me. They're going to hear my father. They're not going to have to be told by somebody else, by flesh and blood. 
They're going to hear the Father for themselves. And they're going to know. And they're going to hear me. This is what the church is going to be. I've never seen it that way, Dad, till today. And he, and he dropped that. How the beginning of the church, he was telling Peter, this is what it's going to look like. This is what the church is going to be like. You're going to be able to hear the Father. Not be told by a high priest who told the, the other priest who told the other lay member who told you. Who, or who wrote it down, who, you know, handed it out. But by the Father. To hear him for yourself. To hear him for yourself. Not to call Cindy what, what God say. Prophesy. I need a prophecy. I need to hear the word of God. I need to hear a word. But to hear God for ourselves. Upon this rock, he said, I'll build my church. That divine revelation that God spoke to Peter. Not not an angel, not Gabriel, but the, the I am. The Father spoke to Peter. Not even Jesus, Jesus did, but the Father <laughs> spoke to Peter. And Jesus confirmed it. Jesus said, flesh and blood's not told you this, but my Father has. <laughs> yes. No, he spoke it to his heart, which what he, how he speaks to each and one, every one of us. He didn't boom it out loud and thunder it out because he said it. He said it out loud there at the, the bank with John and them and the other places. He thundered it. But he spoke to Peter in his heart, in his mind, to him alone did he speak. And he said, upon this rock. I'll build my church, that they'll know my voice, hear my voice, and another they won't follow. They won't follow. But because of Jesus, because of that sacrifice, that firstborn of the dead, of new many brethren, he's the first begotten of the dead, that I had that opportunity to have that relationship to hear. A direct line to the Father. Not a party line, but a direct line into the Father. Not a switchboard that I have to get rerouted around, but that a direct line into the Father because of Jesus. What he's given us. What he has given us. Like she was saying, the investment, that light, that's what we've been shrouded in. My life song should sing of him because what he's done, that, that I could hear the Father. That I could hear the Father. That I could hear him speak and speak what he says. What an awesome thing that he's done for each and every one of us. And how much more should we want to communicate with him to hear him better? To hear him clearly. To hear him clearly. Amen. But tonight we're going to have an altar call. He says draw nigh to me. And I'll draw nigh to you. Come from out from among the world. And I'll receive you unto myself. And I'll make you my sons and daughters. <laughs> he says sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. So all we got to do is come to him and hear him because that's what he was telling Peter. This is what the church is going to be like. This is what that church is going to be like, Peter. You're going to hear God. You're going to know because everybody was saying all oh, this and that. And he says, who do you say? And see, Peter just he spoke up with what he, what he felt deep because God spoke. God spoke to him. Imagine that. 400 years, they never heard from God. And then Gabriel comes and speaks. But God Almighty spoke to Peter. What an honor. 
Wonder why Satan desired to sift him as wheat. Because he already heard from God. So if he got stronger in it, what was it going to (laughs) become? A mighty force to contend with that he could lay down between two soldiers in four quadrants deep of a Roman prison. I'll die tomorrow, but oh well. (laughs) And then walk out with an angel. That takes some peace. That takes a peace that passes all understanding to lay down, to know that you're going to die the next day. His peace that, that no man can give you, but that God can. But he heard God Almighty. And Jesus told him he did. He says, flesh and blood I ain't revealed this to you, Peter. But my father has. My father told you this. And he knew, and he said, upon that rock, I'll build my church. And the church of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ began when he was resurrected. And that salvation, and I love that song, King of Kings, where it says, and then the church of Christ, it says, in his love he loved, or, he loved me, and he's resurrected me. Amen. Amen. Because he's given us a chance. To hear the Father. To hear what God says. Not just to hear it, but to speak it, Jesse. To speak what God says. There's times that he will say to hold it. Because it's just for us. But then there's other times he'll say speak it. And that's where that he said in um, Colossians, he says that you might walk worthy. Where is it? Or in the wisdom. Or we... Um, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding to know how and when to say what God says (laughs) and to know God in the knowledge of God to hear him but that's who he is and he's so amazing And he wants to have a conversation with you. He just simply wants to. That's why he says he desires to be in your presence. He wants to have a conversation with you. But we got to be willing to listen. To hear him. But tonight, let's find us a place to pray. But upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen.